the stories are all different, but the plot stays the same. Are we seeing a certain formula emerge, which if followed properly, enables people to get away with murder? Let's break down the facts. If there was just one fact that I feel is the most important and most universally applicable to all true crime cases, it's that absence of proof does not mean proof of innocence, and here's where we're going wrong as a society. Again, I'll use Barry Morphew as an example, since the fact that he will more than likely get away with murdering his wife Suzanne just because he didn't leave the evidence behind necessary under our current criminal justice system to convict him makes me want to vomit. I really object to the way the legal concept of proof evident presumption great was used by that Colorado judge, because this is precisely the problem. Why are these concepts mutually inclusive? Why must it be that simply because Barry Morphew did not leave proof evident of the fact that he murdered his wife and successfully disposed of her body, the presumption is not great that he did it? Sure it is. Come on. No contact with parents, children, siblings, or friends, and no bank or credit card activity? How could the presumption not be reasonable that a 50-year-old woman is deceased? As for who stood to benefit the most from this woman's death? The usual suspect, of course, the husband. So, as a society, we're supposed to be okay with rewarding scum like Barry Morphew just for doing such a good job cleaning up after himself after he murdered his wife? I don't know about you, but I'm not okay with that. How can anyone then expect that Larry Milliette will ever be arrested for the disappearance and presumed murder of his beautiful wife, Maya? If Milliette's arrest is predicated upon the discovery of either her body or physical evidence tying back to Larry, here's another bastard who reaps the rewards of a justice system more just to the criminal than to the victim. What's the message here? Is it, if you do a good enough job covering up after you murder someone, you'll probably get away with murder? I can honestly say that I have a big problem with that. We need to shift what I'll call the circumstantial focus based upon a theory I'll call the who else but theory. Based upon the same standard of reasonableness currently looked to under our laws, the who else but theory should be able to be substituted in where physical evidence is otherwise lacking. If this was the case, then at Barry Morphew's trial next May, the prosecution could open by conceding lack of physical or forensic evidence implicating Barry Morphew in the death of his wife Suzanne, and then segue right into a statement like, however, given the totality of the circumstances which will be set forth during the course of this trial, we will leave the jury to ask themselves, who else but Barry Morphew is responsible for the disappearance and concluded demise of Suzanne Morphew? Then let the defense attorney prove a higher likelihood than someone other than Barry Morphew murdered his wife. A reasonable possibility? I don't think so. Now I'd like to hear from you. In the comments below, let me know if you think that physical evidence should be the most important factor in convicting someone of murder, or if you share my concern that the lack of this is what allows people like Barry Morphew, Larry Milliette, and maybe even Brian Laundry to get away with murder. Thank you for watching and for clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. See you on the next video where we'll continue to break down the facts.